Hey, adventurers, let's take a moment to celebrate the great outdoors. We know our Ski Mom community loves getting outside to play. Now that the weather's getting cooler, it's time to think layers. Whether scaling peaks or wandering through local parks, Explore has everyone covered. Why? Because they're all about that base. Base layers, that is. From infants to grown-ups, Explore crafts their layers from premium 100% merino wool. Unmatched in comfort and machine washable for convenience. Plus, Explore is proud to offer the first 100% merino wool nursing-friendly top. So why not elevate comfort on every journey? Ski Mom's members can save 10% off their orders with code Ski Mom on the Explore website. Visit explore.com, that's I K S P L O R.com today. And don't forget to follow them on social media at Let's Go Explore. Discover why every adventure feels better when wrapped in the comfort of Explore. Welcome to the Ski Mom Fun Podcast. We're your hosts, Nicole and Sarah. Hi, Ski Moms. It's Nicole here. You might have heard this message in our podcast feed. The episode you are requesting requires a subscription. Please follow the link in the show notes to subscribe and listen now. We're not trying to annoy you, we swear. It's simply a way for us to offset the production costs of running this podcast. Believe it or not, Sarah and I bootstrap the entire operation. For just $3 a month, you get access to ad-free episodes and bonus content. It's our way to say thank you for supporting us. Today, the Ski Moms are joined by Kelly Johnson. She's got a very important story to share with us about safety on the slopes, and we are grateful to her for making time to tell us about the Snow Angel Foundation and her personal stories. So thank you so much for joining us, Kelly. You're welcome. I am honored to be here. So why don't we start with where you're talking with us from today? I am coming from Thermopolis, Wyoming, the small, small town of less than 3000 in the middle of Wyoming. Is there skiing near there? (laughs) Yes. Our, our closest is, sorry, our closest hill is an hour and a half away on good roads, um, the mountain. And then from there, our, our biggest, um, resort is probably Jackson and it's four plus hours away worth the drive right maybe not a day trip (laughs) yeah not a day trip but definitely worth it though I don't know people in those great big states um look at distance driving (laughs) in a way that people from um the eastern side of the country do not yeah that is true did you learn to ski when you were little too I did not I actually so Chauncey and I grew up together and we're in the same grade same class so um we were in the same elementary school and our fifth grade teacher took took all the fifth graders on a ski trip everyone who wanted to go and so that was his and I first time we we went on our very first ski trip together and then after that fifth grade trip we I went with youth group from church and the YMCA bus things like that. My, my parents never took their, I, I was raised with seven kids of six siblings. Um, so that wasn't something that we could afford to do as a family, but my parents did that together before they had kids. So skiing was always something that was um, encouraged and, and talked about highly, you know, mom and dad remembering their ski days and things like that wasn't something that we did. Um, but it was, it was encouraged and why don't we start with the story about Snow Angel? Um, can you tell us in whatever way you're comfortable about your accident and your daughter's accident? Yes. Um, uh, for your listeners who maybe have not heard our story, um, very simply put, we went skiing as a family on Christmas Eve 2010. Uh, we, at the time, had three children. Um, Elise was five years old. Millie was three years old. And our son Logan was only four months old. It was Christmas Eve. We went skiing uh, as a family. And I was actually skiing alone with our oldest daughter, Elise. And her ski had come off in the middle of the run. 
So I was right there next to her getting it back on. And meanwhile, at the top of the hill, a 23-year-old snowboarder told his friends he was going to see how fast he could make it down to the lift. Um, it was estimated he was going between 50 and 60 miles per hour when he collided with us. And he at least got thrown 30 to 40 feet. He himself uh, was 30-ish feet away. And I was actually right there. I, I just got thrown straight to the ground. Um, our our daughter Elise did not make it. She passed away that day. The snowboarder also passed away that day. And I was sent to the hospital and spent three months in recovery from a traumatic brain injury. Well, we are so sorry for your loss. And I mean, nothing that we can say or do can, you know, heal that particular pain. Um, Sarah and I are going to try and keep it together um, to talk about what you've done since then. But our hearts just go out to you because 10 years, 20 years, like nothing is going to fill that hole. But the way that your family has taken this loss and uh, move forward to protect other families just inspires us so much. So thank you for for that. Let's talk a little bit about your recovery because yours was a big one. I know a little bit about traumatic brain injury. My dad just had a fall and uh, had an uncle hit by a car. So I'm somewhat familiar with, with them. But um, for those people who don't understand, could you kind of walk us through what what you went through? Uh, yes, you were right. Every every brain injury is different and it your recovery can look night and day different just depending on the injury and and your care afterwards immediately afterwards. So, um where I was right after the accident, I have no memories until the end of middle middle to end of um January. So, for that month, it's kind of like the movie Fifty First States, if you've seen that with Drew Barrymore, where I didn't, she didn't have twenty four hour recall. So every night when she went to sleep, she would wake up and not remember yesterday, and that was me for about a month. Um, I was taken to Craig Hospital in Denver, Colorado, and that is where I, quote unquote, woke up and was slowly able to remember, you know, 24 hours, what I had for dinner yesterday and things like that. Um, so I was basically reset back to an infantile state where I, I had to relearn how to sit, stand, walk, even eat. And, um, and all the, all the things that go along with, with eating and sitting and everything that you just never think about because we did those things when we were literally infants and and toddlers um, learning how to coordinate chewing and swallowing and breathing and talking and all those things were kind of reset so I had amazing therapists that helped me relearn those things and really be aware of where I truly was at that time and where I needed to get back to um, my, because of the accident, so the accident, I, my brain was impacted on the left side of my brain. So that meant that the right side of my body had, had the effects and I also whiplashed. And so the, the nerves, the nerve roots coming out of my spine on the right side of my neck got stretched to the point that they almost separated but they didn't completely. But because of this, my right arm for all of 2011 was completely immobile. It was paralyzed. It it was just hanging there. And, and Chauncey, my husband, actually had to learn from the therapist how to how to tape it up so it would stay up in position. Otherwise, it would dislocate down. <laughs> so I when I was when I was sent home from um, the recovery hospital, I had a three-year-old to take care of, a four-month-old. So I was was taught how to adjust to changing diapers, feeding a baby, things like that with only my 
my non-dominant left hand. And really, really, because I had the kids to take care of, that was, that was a huge reason why I did recover to the point that I have now, because they kept me moving. They kept me always doing something different. And, and I couldn't just forget about my right arm. I had to make sure that it was following along as best as it could. And, and that is um, where I'm at. But as far as my personality with brain injuries, the scariest part is that even when I was still um, not fully awake, the doctors would tell Chauncey, we don't know if her personality is going to be different. We don't know. We have no idea what basically what your wife is going to be like at this point. And that was a very scary thing for him. But to the, to, from relearning how to do everything to now, even, um, even good friends of mine from before the accident probably can't tell a difference in my personality and my abilities. My right arm is still partially um, paralyzed. It's, it's still not fully mobile, but even that most people can't, don't notice it until I show them what my limitations are. Compared to other patients that I saw leaving Craig, I, it's, I have had truly a miraculous recovery and and I've been so blessed to be able to fully function. And we even had two more children after after the accident. So I always wanted five kids. And then after the accident, Chauncey said, like, I, I can't, I can't see you in the hospital again. I don't think I can handle that. So as soon as I convinced him that it was my brain that was injured, not my uterus. I could do this, but he, he finally, after getting the okay from my neuropsychologist and my, my neurologist and everyone that they said, we, you know, she, she can do this. We, we had two more daughters. Wow. That's, that is amazing. And so how old are your children now? All, all of them. So our oldest now is 15 and our son is 12. And then we have the four-year gap and Reese is eight and Leilani is six. And so, you know, thank you for sharing that whole story and that whole experience. And tell us about like, you know, the the decision to then take that whole experience and start Snow Angel Foundation. Was that you and your husband? How did you decide to embark on that? That is a great question. Chauncey um told me that when he was still when I was still inpatient in the hospital he really felt strongly that he needed to pursue something to prevent this from happening to other families and so that is where it first started while I was still completely in recovery not coming out he I mean at that point he didn't even know how bad things were going to be with me um, but he he knew that he wanted to do something. Um, so then fast forward to, it had to have been early 2016. He asked me about like, what do you think about reaching out to the National Ski Areas Association to see if they they would want to use our story for just awareness and education and as you know, as just a a safety plug for, for skiing. And I was on board at that point, right. It was right around then when I feel like both of us reached the point emotionally that we could talk about the accident. We could talk about everything and, um, and feel a lot more comfortable with it. You know, that's not all, that's not the case the whole time during grief and what you go through. And, but we were, we're both at a place in our, in our grieving that it was probably time for us to start talking about it more. So he reached out to the NSAA and, and to his surprise, he was completely shocked that they said, yes, we and have opened up, oh, like welcomed us with open arms and wanted to collaborate with us. And it was um, through meeting with them and their connections that 
we were able to make the the first red another day video that we see and they have they have just continued to support us and and be with us every step even through 2020 2021 all of like everything getting shut down um we all have kind of we're we're trying to recover from that now and and try and build up and grow again just because we really would love to make more of an impact um, with our story to help prevent this truly from hopefully happening happening again to other people. So tell us about the Ride Another Day video and some of the, the material that has gone out to mountains and that you're sharing with the skiing public. Let's take a quick break. The Ski Mom Shop has some exciting new deliveries. We've updated the gear to celebrate our new season. Click the link in show notes or head to Ski Mom's Fun Shop on Shopify to load up on new mugs, magnets, totes, and more. So simply put, right another day is exactly exactly that. We just really want to use our story to be able to influence other people's behaviors and thinking so that they make choices that will allow them to ride another day and and to educate people on what truly can happen when when you're not being aware of yourself and aware of your surroundings and our our story is such a such a rare very thank goodness such a rare occurrence and it is something that we believe could have been avoided and we believe that we can we can prevent this from happening to other people but really even even preventing like a big accident like this from happening again or even just you know season ending injuries or just injuries in general we're hoping that people are able to tweak their thinking just a little bit by hearing our story to where it will we'll see instances and accidents and injuries all decrease just because of awareness and and like i said a, a tweak in your thinking to to maybe slow things down or um be more cautious of other people give people more space and watch your speed and be like very vigilantly aware of the conditions and and how things can change in a moment when you're skiing. I don't know if you've seen the the poster with the empty snow angel. The um, NSA when the we collaborated with the NSA and they helped produce that video and and the poster with the she um she was five you were doing 50 we wanted something that was just very quick visual to look at to impact you immediately and just that quick she was five you were doing 50 just as a quick reminder that people could see on the lift towers or at the top of the run or at the bottom but just something quick to hopefully rein you in and help bring your thinking down to hopefully safety and cautiousness and we believe that it that it can be that simple i i i know that there are many things in my life that i have heard of a story happening to someone else and that has forever changed the way i either drive or the way i mountain bike or these things that you you hear of really the worst case scenario that has happened and it changes your behaviors. It changes how you think about things and how immortal you think you are. And so that is that is what the Ride Another Day campaign is for, is to use our story to hope influence and impact others thinking and awareness of truly what safety is all about on the mountains. So you take some of the messaging and do you go to individual ski resorts like what is your what are the channels that you push out your messaging through where where we would where we would see this or could you know share it with our children yes we 
so far, we have here in Thermopolis, we have gotten to go and speak to the high school, middle school, and elementary school. So we have we have tweaked the message for those different age groups um, and things like that. But for um, the opportunities we've had uh, away from this, we have gotten to speak to the National Ski Patrol at this um, National Ski Patrol convention. And we have gone to many individual resorts with with their um, like their orientations in the fall. And we just share our our message and we we talk about we we try to leave everything on a good note. We we want everyone to know that we we still love to ski. We still ski. We want everyone to have fun. I <laughs> I would call myself a a very amateur park rat. I really love jumps and and those kind of things. So I am not going to be the one to tell you like you know be safe don't you know don't don't push yourself don't try anything new that isn't at all our messaging our messaging really is just be um just be aware of others around you be aware of the conditions and there there are so there are so many things that you can do like so take for instance the snowboarder who collided with us if he had when he um told his friends at the top that he was going to beeline it down basically if he had asked one of his friends to to go and spot and make sure that the run was clear you know how how differently things could have turned out if you know if his friend was there waving him down halfway to to let him know that the run wasn't empty and so even just putting just a couple of steps ahead thinking like that to just be cautious so if you are if you are trying something new or if you are trying to um, push your personal best and things like that. You're at least doing it in a way that can prevent any injury for yourself or for others. Taking a taking a moment to remember our story, remember that this happened to someone else, and take that into account of what you're choosing to do as, as your next move. Really can can make a difference, and and we think could have prevented this from happening to us and hopefully we'll prevent this from happening to others. You know, there's driver's ed that's mandatory for every kid before they get behind the wheel and get to go 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, then 50 miles an hour. There's nothing when it comes to high speed sports like skiing and it's exhilarating to go fast. I wouldn't know. I'm not a very fast skier, but um, (laughs) it, it, People tell me it's very exhilarating. And, you know, there are there's ski races that you can do. You know, you can go down NASTAR Um, in Europe. There there are places where you can get timed. It's sort of a uh, carved out part of a trail where you can go and there's a little odometer that says how fast you're going. It's super exciting to 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 do that. And I think this is such an important message as, you know, our teenagers and our younger kids gain independence on the mountain that as parents, uh, as ski school leaders, that we have some sort of safety checks for our kids before we set them loose. I don't know if it would have changed the outcome. There's still going to be some accidents. There's still car accidents with driver's ed. But I do think having some of these tools in which to share the messaging. I mean, I still remember some of the the driver's ed stories that they show you when you're learning to drive that make you think about coming around a corner too fast or you know, drinking and driving. You know, those things really sunk in. Um, and I'm hoping that you know, by sharing some of your messaging, you know, we can get messages out to young adults, young kids, and and to older adults as well who sometimes take risks without thinking about the consequences. Yes, absolutely. And I, I love the um, correlation between driver's ed and, and skiing. It is so true. So the, the snowboarder, they, the investigators estimated that hit, me being hit by this, you know, say 200 pound, 23 year old man was the equivalent of getting hit by a VW bug at going like 30 ish miles an hour. So literally it, I could have been hit by a car 
and that is so when you put it into perspective and you and you um kind of measure it like next to a car that really is what what our bodies in motion can be equivalent to and i think that it is and just like you mentioned um still remembering some of the driver's ed education that is exactly what we are hoping to our story to be able to be an influence and 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 similarly with the drivers that they're not trying to scare you away from driving they're not trying to say oh, this can happen this can happen you probably shouldn't drive they're trying to give you those kind of that picture to influence your thinking and your ownership of your choices as you're driving and that's exactly what we want to do with our story and our message is to just give you the the reason to have ownership of how you are staying in control and your actions. And then our hope is to truly be able to influence the whole industry to the point that as skier to skier, border to border are calling each other out, you know, oh, that ski patrol better get that guy. Like, no, no, no. We need to, we need to be keeping each other in check. We need to be helping the ski patrol out. And, and all of us need to take ownership and responsibility for our own actions. And like I said, we, we love the sport. We want everyone to have fun. I love being on this podcast with other moms who are getting their kids out and being adventurous. And I feel like that is so important for the strength of your family, for the strength of as us as women and moms. It is so vital for us to have these these especially winter activities that we can do and i mean the the magical wonderful times on the ski lift with our kids and all of all of the memories that are made it's so important to the upbringing of our children and to just to be too scared to go is would just be a, a shame and a waste it would be amazing if we could require that every every new skier take a lesson and that they're taught these things but that's not really realistic, both financially and probably at, most mountains probably don't have enough ski ski school to to handle that either. But if we can have the kids who are in school ski school get the messaging and to help that become the expectation of the skiing culture, then it's something that would would hopefully trickle down from us veteran skiers to the to new rising skiers and meet in the middle and hopefully like i've said before become an industry wide culture of just being more safe and aware and and looking out for each other and we want other people to enjoy it and and love it as much as we do but there there is it does have to be taken as seriously as as driving a vehicle because the the consequences can be just as brutal. Well, I I love that you are still enjoying the mountains as a family. I think that is such a testament to your family bonds and the the power of the outdoors to heal families and to bring families together. Um, Do you get opportunities for all of you to spend time outside on uh, skiing and riding together? We do. We do now that we're all on skis. So we have the two older ones, um, 15 and 13, who go off by themselves now a little bit more. And we try to encourage them to go off with their friends because I feel like them skiing just with mom and dad too much has kind of hindered their their growth because we're just all too cautious. But they are they are now going off with their friends and then we still sk- ski with the the smaller ones who we still ride the lift with and things like that. But yes, it's amazing. We get to all go up and we went to Palisades Tahoe and they have an, yeah, they have a six person lift. So we all got to ride the lift together. It was, it was amazing. So, so they're all, all six of you are skiers. There's no snowboarders coming out in the mix. Well, we actually, except for the youngest Leilani, we actually all can ski and snowboard. Wow. We can all do both. That's a lot of equipment. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. My poor husband, he, he needs, he, cause he maintains all the equipment and 
loads it and unloads it. And but yes, a lot of equipment. And we we usually he actually finally got to the point this last season that he was like, okay, are we skiing or are we snowboarding today? I'm not I'm not bringing both. But yeah, we can we can do both. And I think I saw on um, your Instagram that you all had done some program. Maybe it was at Killington. Was that recently or was that a while ago? Yes, we got to go um, to Killington just in January. And for their for safety month, we were able to go there and do a, a fundraiser with them. And and Ski Vermont has has really welcomed our story and our messaging. And they are building a program that will be throughout all of the resorts in Vermont, in Vermont so that it's kind of across the line, the same safety messaging with our story. And we are excited and very, very honored to, to have you really all like all of Ski Vermont welcome us and be excited about the messaging. And that is is going to be, um, I think, a big turning point for our foundation to, to be able to have such such a strong ski association really kind of adopt us and pave the way for hopefully other other ski associations to to model and and follow and i'll just say in vermont you have you have no lack of older skiers who aren't afraid to yell at anyone going too fast <laughs> so they are they are yelling your message loud and clear um and they are not afraid to let anybody know and i'd say i see that a lot on the mountains in vermont for sure yes uh, yes we have we have gotten to to meet many of them who come up and tell us about how they were hit and how they have have like you said yelled our message at, at people and it's it is i mean it's so so hard to see these they keep skiing though they they keep saying you know i got i got hit 10 years ago and i and it's it's amazing and i love their example of continuing to go. So if parents want to find out more information about the foundation or give to the foundation, or let's say if they are um, a coach, because a lot of those ski racer kids go mighty fast and they want to incorporate some of your messaging, what's the best way for them to reach out to you and find out more about the foundation? Really going to snowangelfoundation.org is the best place for for more information and kind of up to date on what we what we have been doing how to get a hold of us we 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 love it for people to feel comfortable to feel at home on the mountain because that really it is a place of peace for us it is a place that we that's why we want to raise our kids doing it because it truly is can strengthen relationships and it can and really help you grow in ways that nothing else can but you have to be aware of of your attitude and your thinking and and where you're letting that take you as far as as far as safety and keeping yourself and others safe well, I'm glad that you're still out there enjoying winter. Do you all have any family traditions around skiing or like an annual trip that you take or, you know, at, at the end of a ski day, things that you do together? We uh, we honestly haven't for the last uh, couple few Christmases, but before the accident, especially, which is why we're there on Christmas Eve, is we when Christmas Eve doesn't fall on a Sunday, we try to go skiing on Christmas Eve um, just to be out in snow like, you know, like Santa Claus. But I mean, there's there's always the hot chocolate. I don't know if you guys have heard the song Forcing My Kid to Ski. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I wish my husband was here. He we have to look it up. up. <laughs> we have to look it up. Yes. I'll have to email it to you. Um, anyways, it's a song that like forcing my kid to ski I'm forcing my kid to ski <laughs> and in that it says if you ski to the end of the day you'll get hot cocoa and so we we play that song a lot and and say you're gonna earn your hot cocoa 
thank you so much and so much for your time and for sharing your story. And we are excited to yell at anyone going fast on the slopes, right, Nicole? We'll practice. I, I don't need anybody to, to <laughs> encourage me anymore. Slow down. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for being awesome moms and, and getting these messages out. A quick note to make sure you all know about the Ski Moms Fun website and store. We have all sorts of great Ski Mom swag, from stickers to hats, and we're just loving the soft, quick-drying neck buffs. So please check it out. Go to SkiMomsFun.com and click on Store to see all the goodies and get your own. As always, 10% of the profits go to Share Winter Foundation. Check it out. Thank you so much for listening to the Ski Moms Fun Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Head to the SkiMomsFun.com website to check out our swag and find out more about our community. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at SkiMomsFun. We'll be back next week with more interviews and insights. Thanks, Snow. A new ski season means new gear. And smart ski moms know to label all the new gear before it leaves the house. With Mabel's Labels, you won't end up at home with only one of those new mittens or missing your favorite new necky. For Christmas, I'm getting my husband a pair of beautiful bamboo ski poles, and he'll be using Mabel's Labels to keep track of them. These labels aren't just for kids. We've all seen how ski equipment can look very similar on a rack. With Mabel's Labels, families can easily identify their gear and prevent items from being lost or misplaced. Mabel's Labels durable, personalized labels are perfect for skis, poles, helmets, gloves, and basically anything that goes to the mountain. Mabel's Labels are dishwasher and laundry safe. Their labels provide a practical and convenient solution for busy parents, ensuring their belongings are well organized. Say goodbye to misplaced belongings and hello to stress-free ski trips. Make sure all of those amazing holiday gifts don't get lost or left behind. Use code SKIMOMS for 15% off all labels. Code is not valid on sale or stamp. Other restrictions may apply.